Good evening to you, Victory Through Faith Church family. I pray that all is going well with you today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I want you to rejoice and be glad in it. I know the day is almost over, but let it get you ready for tomorrow. Uh, I'm ready to teach a word today that I, I believe is going to bless you. It's something that I spoke on last year, and the Spirit of God prompted it in my heart. And so I'm not going to go over everything, but I do want to share with you what the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to share with you today. So let's go to God in prayer. I just want to cover our, our word tonight. I want to make sure that you're ready and receptive and prepared to receive. And then we'll get into what the Spirit of God has given me. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kind. We just thank you for being you, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for giving us Jesus. We thank you that it's in you that we have life and life more abundantly. And I thank you that your life is revealed to us through your word. So as we fellowship together around your word, Lord God, I pray that your life is made manifest in us and we are able to live that life out by faith every day. Lord, I pray for wisdom and revelation knowledge to be manifested to and through your people. And Father God, I've yielded and submitted myself to you as a willing vessel to teach your word. And I thank you that as your word is taught, your people are empowered, your people are equipped, and the power within them is awakened and activated. So we look forward to your power being made manifest in and through us according to your word and according to our faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's get right into it. You know, uh, last year and tonight we're going to talk about protect your peace, protect your peace. But I'm calling it a divine reminder, because for those of you that have been rocking with us for quite a while, you know that last year I taught a series entitled Protect Your Peace. And it was actually a five part series. We taught that from September the 16th through October the 14th. And uh, I had no intention, really, that I didn't even know when I taught it. When the Spirit of God brought it back up to my remembrance, I knew it was something I had taught on not that long ago. However, what he brought up to me was something that he wanted me to share in addition to what we taught from last week. So if you remember that message from if you remember that series from last year, I highly recommend that you go back to it and watch parts one through five at your leisure. Protect your peace again. That started on September the 16th through October the 14th. Those videos are on our YouTube page, so you can just scroll down into our video list and you should be able to run across it, parts one through five. Uh, However, the Holy Spirit spoke this phrase to me several days ago, and I believe that God wants us to refresh our thinking concerning our experience of his peace. I believe that God wants us to refresh our thinking concerning our experience with his peace. Amen. So I'm not going to cover everything out of those five lessons. Of course, I'm going to give you what I got to give you tonight because I've got some primary things, three primary things that God wants me to give you tonight. However, I do believe it would be in your best interest to go back to last year and look at those series again, because especially in this time we're in where things are becoming more and more chaotic. There are so many things pulling at you and there are so many things going on. It's important that we understand that we need to protect our peace as children of God. It's also important to understand that we already possess the peace of God It's our responsibility to protect it. And by and by by saying that we already possess it, we got to have some scripture to back that up. So let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 27, I'm going to read the New King James Version, or I'm going to read the King James Version, and then I want to read the New Living Translation. The King James Version of John 14, 27 says, Peace, I, now this is Jesus talking, it's in red. He says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, 
neither let it be afraid. So what keeps us from experiencing the peace of God when our hearts are troubled, when our hearts are afraid, that keeps us from experiencing the peace that Jesus has given us. That's why I say it's important to understand that we already possess the peace of God and we need to prioritize and prize and utilize what God has already given us. We don't have to pray for peace. We've already got peace. We need to utilize it and prize what God has given us. It's important to understand that we already have peace. Again, you know, I believe that's a major issue in the body of Christ. I believe that we're praying for things that God has already given us. We are praying for things that we've already received through Christ. And by default, or just by the basis of praying for what we already have, it shows that we have a limited understanding of what God has already done for us. Because Jesus said, I'm, I'm leaving you with peace and it's my peace that I'm giving unto you. Now listen to what it says in the New Living Translation of John 14, 27. Jesus said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Don't be troubled or afraid. So that's good, Lord. So whatever is troubling you and whatever you're fearful of, that is the enemy trying to strip you of your peace. That peace that only God can give, that peace, that sense of wholeness, that sense of comfort, that sense of ease, that shalom, that peace that only God can give you. That's what the enemy is trying to strip from you. And you got to understand that you don't have to pray for it. You've got it. You've got to exercise your faith in that reality and you've got to protect what God has given you. It's important to understand as children of God that we already possess the peace of God. Jesus gave it to us. It's our responsibility to utilize what Jesus has already given. So uh, like I alluded to earlier, I shared this and there's no way I can go back and recap everything I talked about last year. So I'm going to trust you with the responsibility of going back to protect your peace uh, parts one through five at your leisure on your own time because it's a really really good lesson it's one of those lessons that you ought to go to throughout the year just to keep yourself built up it's a really good lesson i highly recommend that you go back to it however for this lesson for this evening the spirit of god has given me three primary things that he wants me to share with you and those three primary things Bring from what I'm about to share with you in order to protect our peace. We need to do three things. These are the three things that I've got to give you tonight and then I'm done. I'm not going to stretch it any further than what it needs to be to protect our peace. We need to guard, manage and monitor in order to protect our peace. The peace we already established that we got peace because Jesus said, I'm leaving you with my peace. It's my peace. It's my peace that I'm giving to you. And we know that whatever Jesus gave us, he gave us through the Holy Spirit. So we have Jesus peace because we have the spirit of God dwelling on the inside of us. OK, so you've got the peace of God and peace is actually a fruit of the spirit. The fruit of what spirit? The fruit of the Holy Spirit that resides in your spirit. That's why I say you don't have to pray for peace any more than you have to pray for faith, because the Bible tells us that God has given to every man the measure of faith. God has also given to every man peace because it is a fruit of the spirit. It's, it is. That's that's a great way to say it, Lord. It is the produce of the spirit who dwells within you. Glory to God. So you don't have to ask God to give you peace. You've got peace. We need to learn how to utilize and maximize what God has already given us. So in order to protect our peace, we need to do three things. We need to guard. We need to manage and we need to monitor. That means that experiencing the peace of God requires our direct involvement. We just can't sit back and hope, well, I just, I'm waiting for the peace to come. I'm waiting for the peace to drop. I'm just waiting for that peace. I'm waiting for peace. I'm waiting for peace. No, experiencing the peace of God requires our direct 
involvement. Many of the things of God require our direct involvement because faith without works is dead. For by grace are we saved through faith. So faith is how we tap into the multi-layered grace of God, the multifaceted grace of God. So if you want to experience God's grace in every area of your life, you got to use faith. And if you're going to use faith, that means you got to put some action to what you believe. Faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding action is dead. Why? Because it's standing all by itself. Faith and grace got to dance in order for manifestation to take place. If you're just walking by grace, you don't have any faith dancing with that grace. You're not going to get a manifestation. And if you're just trying to walk by grace, but you don't have faith. And if you're just trying to walk by faith, but you don't have grace, you're not going to receive the manifestation of what God has already provided and promised for you. Amen. Now, in order to experience and protect the peace of God, we've got to guard, manage, and monitor. So what do we have to guard first? Now, remember, experiencing the peace of God requires our direct involvement. So what I'm about to share with you, these are things that you must do. These are things that I must do. These are things that we must do. Now, anything we are required to do, God graces us to accomplish. So you don't have to do this in your own self effort, but it does require effort. You don't have to do it in your own self effort but it does require effort. So first, what do we have to guard? We need to guard our heart. First, we gotta guard our heart. And for that scripture text, because I'm always gonna give you some scripture, because one reason is that's because the way God ministers to me, and that's the way he's called me to minister to you, I've got to always give you scripture to back up what I'm sharing with you so you know it's God and not me. Anybody can come before you and say a thing, but I've got to bear out what I'm saying to you in the word. So the first thing we need to do is guard our heart. Proverbs chapter four, verse 23 tells us to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. It says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And I don't have it in my notes, but I am prompted to turn to Luke 645. Luke 645 says, check it out. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So in order to protect our peace, the first thing we got to do is guard our hearts. You got to maintain, you got to protect your heart. Uh, guard means to protect against damage or harm. So you got to guard your heart. You got to monitor, you got to manage, you got to guard, you got to guard your heart. You got to protect your heart against damage. That means now, what you see, that's good, Lord. What you see, what you hear, what you say impacts your heart. So you have to protect what you're seeing. You have to guard what you're seeing. You have to guard what you're saying. You have to guard what you're hearing because that's the way your heart is impacted. And out of the abundance of your heart. Out of your heart flow the issues of life. So whatever's going in is going to come out. And it's not necessarily what you're thinking that's a problem. It's what you're feeding on that's a problem. You're not guarding your heart. You're filling yourself with the news. You're filling yourself with these negative videos. You're filling yourself with these bad reports. And then you're wondering why your peace is gone. You're wondering why you're dealing with anxiety and stress and worry and fear and you're having trouble sleeping. It's because your heart has been bombarded with anxiety and trouble and fear. And we got to guard our hearts from that. You got to turn the news off. You got to put the paper down. You got to get off the social media feeds. You can't you can't be on that all day long and expect to experience the peace of God, because the first thing you got to do to protect your peace is guard your heart. Proverbs 4, 23. You have to guard your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The issues you encounter in life have a lot to do with what's residing in your heart. So it's important that in order to protect your peace, you have to keep or guard your heart. So that's the first thing you do. First, we need to guard our heart. Second, what's the second thing we need to do? We know that the second thing we need to do is manage. What do we need to manage, Pastor Jay? Secondly, we must manage our mind. Oh, this is a big one. 
We got to manage our minds. So for proof text, I want to turn to Philippians chapter four. Now, we read this in the lesson last year, Protect Our Peace. Uh, and I want to go back to it because this, this is something you should be looking at every single day. Philippians chapter four, we must manage our mind and you can't manage your mind unless you know what you're supposed to be thinking on. The way we manage our mind is to first understand what we should be thinking about, what we should be thinking on, and then managing our mind by recognizing I'm not thinking what I should be thinking or what I'm thinking I shouldn't be thinking. So I need to manage what I'm thinking. I got some stinking thinking happening here and I need to uproot what I've been thinking and I need to think according to God's word because God's word does tell us how we ought to think in Philippians chapter four, verse six, I'll read verses six through nine. It says, be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God. Here we go. That peace of God, that peace that only God can give. The peace of God, which passes or surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So when we manage our mind properly, the peace of God keeps us. Glory to God. When we manage our minds properly, the peace of God will keep us from being full of anxiety, fear, worry, stress, and all the other things tools that Satan uses to strip us of our peace. Verse eight says, finally, because we got in order to manage our mind, we got to have some kind of grid in order to manage our mind. We got to have some expectations. We need some outlines. We need some guidelines given to us so we know how to manage our mind. And the guideline for mind management is shown to us in verse eight of Philippians chapter four. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are just or whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Verse nine said those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So the grid for thinking. Our guideline for thinking is verse eight. Whatever things are true, honest, just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, that's what we are to be thinking on. So if we're not thinking in line with the guideline given to us in Philippians 4, 8, then we need to manage our thinking properly. We need to cast down imaginations and every high thing or high thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And then we need to bring every thought or thing into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So if I'm thinking something that does not align with God's word, I got to cast that down and cause my thoughts to be agreeable to God's thoughts. So I got to think on those things that are true, those things that are honest, those things that are just, those things that are pure, those things that are lovely, and those things that are of a good report. So a lot of what we're thinking about, we shouldn't be thinking on because it's stripping us of our peace. I wonder if my baby's is going to be all right. I wonder if my family is going to make it. I wonder if my health is going to hold up. I wonder if we're going to run out of money. I wonder if our house is going to be able to be sustained. All of these anxious thoughts we're having are stripping us of our peace. You got to resist those thoughts. You got to cast them down because thinking on those anxious, fearful, nervous thoughts are stripping you of your peace. And it's your responsibility to protect your peace. And the second step in protecting your peace is managing your mind. Manage means to regulate or to maintain control over. You shouldn't just be thinking. You've got to be aware of what you're thinking. And then when you're aware that what I'm thinking is not biblical, then you got to bind that up. You got to cast that down. You can't be thinking fear based. That's good. How do I know if I should be thinking of Pastor Jay? Is it fear based or is it faith based? Is it based on the word or is it based on hearsay? Is it based on what God said or is it based on what they say? Is it based on what the word has declared or is it based on what the people that call themselves 
powerful in the world are saying. See, if they're saying it in the world, that's fine. That's cool. But you got to remember we're in this world, but we are not of this world. So we are not limited to the forecast that the world has to offer. My God, you have to manage your mind. You just can't be sitting alone with your thoughts, letting them go wild. You got to take control of those. No, I reject that. I, I don't receive that. I don't receive that. I will both prosper and succeed. I will live a long life. My family is secure. My family is settled. My family is established. Whatever it is that the enemy is trying to hit you with, you've got to resist him. You've got to submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. And part of resisting the devil is casting down. Imagine why I say that. That's good. Part of resisting the devil is casting down imaginations because he's going to hit you in the arena of your mind. Many of you know a great book Joyce Meyer wrote many years ago about the battlefield of the mind. And that's where the battle is won or lost before anybody ever sees the, the, the result advertised in your life. The battle is won or lost in the mind. How am I thinking? What is going on inside me internally, mentally? How am I processing what I'm going through? Am I saying that God is putting this on me or am I truly recognizing that this is something Satan is doing to try to pull me off course? And so I have to submit to God and resist the devil because God's not going to do anything or put anything on you where you got to resist God and submit to the devil. Wow. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of believers are doing. We think that God is putting things on us that Satan is putting on us. And then we try to give it to God and say, well, God's teaching me or God's testing me or God's perfecting me. No, that's not God behind what's going on. You have to submit to God and resist the devil, not submit to the devil and resist God. But when you give God credit for what Satan is doing, you are inversing the order of things. God is not trying to teach you a lesson by putting you through hardship. That is not how a parent parents their child, not a good parent. And you got to know this. God is your father. He didn't take that loved one from you. He didn't cause you to go through that turmoil. Did he know that you went through it? Yes. Did he feel your pain? Yes. Was he there with you in it? Yes. But did he push you to go through it to teach you a valuable lesson? No, God doesn't teach us through persecution. God doesn't teach us through trials. God doesn't teach us through negative situations. God teaches us. He prunes us. He cleans us by the word. You got to get that. God uses his word to teach us, not problems. Now problems come, tribulations come, things that we don't understand, they do occur, but you cannot give credit to God for what this fallen world is doing. We live in a broken system. We live in a world that we're not a part of. And so when you live in a world that you're not a part of, some of what that world has to offer is going to affect you. But please, and I implore you, Please stop giving God credit for what Satan is behind. We have to manage our minds. We got to regulate and we got to maintain the proper control over our minds. That's the way you're going to protect your peace. Many of us can't run to God because we think God is the reason we're in the mess we're in. We think God is putting us here to teach us a lesson or God took them from me because I was too dependent. I've heard people say foolish things like that where they lost a loved one or they lost someone they were in a relationship with. And I've heard people come along and say, well, God took them from you because he knew you were too dependent on them. That is one of the most asinine things I've ever heard in my life. God's not going to take a person you love away from you because he feels like you're too close to that person. Please, let's, let's not even get religious on that. Let's not even get spiritual on that. Let's just use some common sense on that. That makes no kind of sense. Why would God do that? Because God knows there's nobody on this planet. There's nobody on this earth that can do for you what he has done for you through his son, Jesus Christ. Nobody can compare. And so God's not going to take a person out of that. God's not. Listen to this. Somebody is telling you that God killed your loved one. So you could draw closer to him. Now, just I don't care who said it because I don't know who said it. So I don't have that bondage on me. Listen to that. That doesn't make sense. And, you know, it doesn't. God didn't take your baby. God didn't take your child. Did they leave? Yeah, they left. But there were other conditions that caused that to occur. God didn't do it. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And life more abundantly. He didn't say I came to take people you love so you can love me. No. 
But the enemy plants thoughts like that. And if we don't manage and regulate our minds, we fall for it hook, line and sinker. And it comes at the cost of our peace. So first, we need to guard our hearts. Second, we must manage our minds. And we know we manage our minds through the grid of Philippians 4, 8. Those things that are those things that are true, those things that are honest, those things that are just lovely, pure of good report. That's what we think on. We have to manage our thoughts. And third and lastly, we must monitor. We got to guard. We got to manage. We got to monitor. So we guard our heart. We manage our mind. And this is the this is the kicker right here. And we got to monitor our mouth. We we got to guard our heart. We got to manage our mind, meaning we got to manage our thought life and we have to monitor our mouth. Let's turn to Philippians. I mean, Proverbs chapter four and we'll get ready to wrap this up. We have to monitor our mouth. We can't afford to just be saying. You know what? If we had a recording of what we said and then we we when we put what we said up against what we believe, we would be shocked at the contrast of our heart versus our mouth, because we can't believe one thing and then say something totally contradictory to what we claim we believe and then expect to receive what we're standing for, because our mouth is fighting against our heart. We got to monitor our mouth. Proverbs chapter four, verse 24. Listen to this. You know this. Put away from thee. Now we read verse 23 about guarding our heart. Verse 24 says this. Put away from thee a froward or deceitful mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. What's a deceitful mouth? A deceitful mouth is when I'm saying something I don't even believe. A deceitful mouth is when I'm saying things that I'm not convinced of. Well, I'm just saying stuff that makes no sense. And I'm saying things that don't align with what I'm believing for God to do. See, we only deceive ourselves when we do that because God knows our hearts. He knows exactly what we believe. And he knows when what we're saying is not in line with what we believe. And so it tells us here to put away from ourselves a forward or a deceitful mouth and perverse lips put far from us. Maybe a better known verse for monitoring, monitoring our mouth is found in Proverbs chapter 18 verses 20 and 21 says a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase or with the produce of his lips shall he be filled. Verse 21 tells us this, this death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Or I say it this way. They that love it shall eat the fruit of it. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we have to monitor. If you want to protect your peace, you got to monitor your mouth. What does monitor mean? Monitor means to observe and check the progress or quality of. So that means you got to be aware of what you're saying. Now, I know what I believe in my heart. Now I have to monitor my mouth to observe and to check whether what I'm saying, you got to do it. Yeah, that's good. You got to do some quality control over your words. OK, is what I'm saying in line with what I'm with what I'm expecting is what I just said matching what I believe. I'm expecting for God to increase me financially. But if I just said I'm broke as a joke, is that in alignment with what I'm believing for? I'm saying I'm standing for healing, but I'm, I'm believing that I'm healed in Jesus name. But I just said, man, I just can't seem to get right. It's what I'm saying aligning with what I'm believing. Am I protecting my peace? You got to monitor your mouth. You got to guard your heart. You got to manage your mind and you got to monitor your mouth. You have to observe and check the progress and the quality of your words. What's coming out of your mouth is what sometimes. And I know this from personal experience. Sometimes we just got to shut up. Sometimes the best thing to say is no thing. Because if you know you're in a place to where you're feeling pressure to say something, but you know what you're feeling pressure to say is against what you're standing for and what you're believing for. That's when you just need to say nothing. That's when you just hey, if you got to put. If you got to put your hand over your mouth just as a point of contact, don't say what you don't want to see. Protect your peace. 
Because as soon as you say it out of your mouth, it strips you of your peace. It strips you of your joy. It strips you of your strength. It even strips you of your faith. If you keep speaking against what you say you believe in your heart, protect your peace. Guard your heart. Manage your mind. Monitor your mouth. Don't let Satan through circumstances and issues rob you of the peace that God has already given you. Protect your peace and exercise your authority in God. You got it. You just got to protect it. How do I do that, Pastor Jay? I guard my heart. I manage my mind and I monitor my mouth. Amen. That's all I've got for you tonight. Go back and watch this again because you got to. This is something you need to repetitively expose yourself to. You have to guard your heart, manage your mind and monitor your mouth. Protect your peace. Don't give your peace to anyone or anything, because what God has for you is in his peace. Wow. Well, until next week, know this. I love you more than words can express. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service. And your success is in God's word. Be blessed in Jesus name.